So everyone, thank you so much for joining us. This is our fourth monthly um, Sister Skipper Zoom meeting. And today we have our Sister Skipper um, with the name Uzo Amake Ize. Uh, she's the author of the book, uh, The Hope in You. I mean, we should all try and do it. <laughs> yeah, sorry, power in you. I mean, I don't know why I always like because of the hope that you said, the power in you, going to believe that you have so much uh, to give out and then you have so much inside of you. And I am urging all of, all of us to go and look for that book on Amazon. And um, today our topic is um, communication. And the, sorry, I'm just admitting people. Yes, uh, today our topic is media and communication with the lens of lit literacy and why it is important. Thank you everyone for joining. Uzo Amaka, the floor is yours and then take us through. Thank you. Thank you, me, for introducing me. Are you guys hearing me? Oh, I'm sorry, they are on mute. So today we are having yes, media I literacy. Can hear. Oh, thank you. You're yes, having media literacy and why it's important. We are all using media, social media, and we all dwell so much in media. So, but we have to learn how to also make use of media to be, to understand how the media works and how we are going to approach it. So that's why media literacy is important. And it has been growing for the past 25 years and has now been incorporated in policies of many countries and education systems. There are so many countries that have incorporated in their education systems, education policies, and I've been teaching them in schools because media literacy is very important. Media literacy means many things to many people but according to media literacy perspectives by Brown, JA, it involves the ability to analyze and appreciate respected works of literature and to communicate effectively by writing well. It is also the ability to analyze competently and to utilize skillfully. Utilize can also mean consume. Utilize skillfully print journalism cinematic productions, which are like um, um, documentaries, movies, and other dramas, stage performances, radio and television, internet information, and the social media. But before we understand media literacy, we need to look at the roles of media. The media performs a lot of roles. And let us also get to understand these roles. The media plays the role of surveillance. In being in surveillance, a news hunter goes to seek the news information, goes to research, goes to hunt events that are happening in the streets. They bring those information to us where we cannot see, where our ears and our eyes cannot go to. That's why we can be here and hear news of what is happening in Armenia, what is happening in US, and what is happening in Nigeria. Is the surveillance. The media brings them closer to us. They become our eyes and our ears. They perform the role of correlation. They bring out this news and lay the facts to us, especially those who go to investigate. There are so many things that are happening behind our backs in government, in society, in everywhere, especially these uh, gangsters that the media goes to find, to investigate. When they come out, when the reporters bring all this information, they lay it in a way that we'll be able to understand. They lay these facts for us to understand and how this world is working. The media plays also the role of sensationalization. By the word of sensationalization, 
we also know what is sensationalism. So the media can put up this information in a way that will arouse us, that will make us to feel, to, to make us, to push us into acting. Then the media can also entertain. We look up to gossips, especially the gossips that are happening around the celebrities, football, um, uh, 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 music. The media brings all these things to us, to entertain us. And then the media transmits religious values and uh, cultural values. Oh, yeah, sorry, my internet went off. It's back now. So the media um, transmits all these values from one generation to the other. Because for us to reach out to members of our society, we still use the media. So the media plays this role for us. And then in mobilization, for us in advocacy, in activism, the media plays also the role of mobilizing. Today in Nigeria, we are protesting end SARS, end police brutality and all this. It is through the media that we will be able to mobilize mass action, to be able to uh, carry out advocacy that will bring out change in our society. The media also plays the role of validation. Most of us want the media to validate our activities, especially when we are called to for interview or for presentation on the media. Even products are validated, even companies are validated. Most times we want to choose a product because we saw it in the media, on the media. Most times we trust individuals because we saw them on the media. The media validates and also the media destroys because anybody that the media says is bad, we tend to believe that that person is bad without due um, checks. So these are the roles that the media plays in our lives. There are so many other roles, but I've brought these seven roles that I'm prominent that let us also look at these issues. We have to acknowledge the power of messages we receive through mass media. The media literacy empowers us to understand how the media affects our daily lives through what we consume. These affect our behaviors, attitudes, values in direct or indirect ways. We may have made decisions about our life and formed opinions on people and ourselves, products and services based on what we consumed. We must also understand the power the media have in our lives and understand how we make sense of certain contents because we have to utilize this, these uh, um, products the media presents and we have to critically analyze them. What essentially media literacy is, is for us to critically analyze every message that we see on the media before it affects our behaviors and our attitudes. But when we lack this literacy, we may not even know that our behaviors and attitudes are changing towards certain people, towards certain community, towards certain product, because we have not critically analyzed these messages that we have consumed. So the media has the power of message, tailored to affect us, for us to make all these attitudinal changes that sometimes we may not even know that we are changing. We have to understand the content by paying attention, identifying noise. A lot of time we are distracted, which impacts our understanding of, our, of the content we consume. When we don't pay attention 
and sift noise, we end up with half information or the ability to analyze the content critically. Much of our inability to understand the media comes from our own consumption behaviors. Many people tend to follow the popular opinion without doing a little due research. Check out alternative and individual voices on your own to further understand any content. The media has the power to control opinions and by not paying attention, we may fall short of media literacy. Most times, many people just go with popular opinion what every, every person is saying. But for you to be media literate, do a little research on your own. All these things that everybody is saying, what are you saying on your own? You go to do research to find out the other side of the story. Because most times the media presents from the angle that they, they think it's okay. We'll still come to that. But for you to under, further understand any message, you can go through alternative sources. You can listen to individual voices. You can listen to street voices. When you gather all these voices, you'll be able to determine on yourself, on your own, what this particular topic is talking about and how the meaning you are going to make out of it. So, but for you to be able to do this, you must be able to pay attention to the message and what the message is saying. We have to understand emotional reactions as well as reasoned reactions to media content. This is number three. Most contents are designed to connect to our emotions, be it news, advertisement, advocacy, ATC. Contents are designed to get us to react and act. It's important to understand our emotional reactions to the media content. But when we stop and think and reason about the content, we will have critical conclusions before we act. There are certain news that you will listen to that might push you to hate, anger, or even happiness. These are the emotions that the media content you have consumed has um, at, um, gotten to. So, but when you, when you criti criticize, critically look at that content, you'll be able to know whether it's worth it to push you to anger or to push you to hate or to push you to overjoy. Remember, that for, for um, most messages are packaged. It depends on the individual choice of words. So these words are chosen and these words are connected in sentences that in a way that to make you to react or to get to your emotion. So we must understand the emotional reactions and also the reasoned reaction. The emotional reaction is the push to anger or to push into the field, the push into the hate. But reasoned reaction is you wait, you criticize, you analyze the content and ask yourself, does it worth it? If it doesn't worth it, then you don't, you are not pushed to hate or you push to emotions. Number four, we often develop expectations for content. When we have preconceived expectation of a content, we give meaning without giving our attention. Some people may think certain content lacked quality and are aimed at certain class of people, so they don't make effort to listen and learn. Sometimes we may just say, this is not for me, maybe because of the medium that this information is coming from, and it's not for me. It's for these people, it's for children, it's for adults, but we must listen, we must pay attention. There are certain messages, there are certain meanings that we derive from most contents that 
if um, re removing the preconceived expectation, we'll be able to understand and also learn from that content. Number five, we should think critically about many information, no matter how credible the source is. It's very essential that we criti critically analyze all messages, no matter how credible the source is. Most contents are motivated by political, profit, or personal factors. Reporters are subjective from the angle they choose to report. Publishers, producers present the information from the perspective they consider, which may be informed by their experiences and agendas they are advocating for. This also affects our interpretation, which are mostly based on a selective interpretation of the information. Most producers, presenters, reporters write news from the angle they deem fit. It's just like having seven blind men trying to describe an elephant. Each of the blind men will describe the elephant from the angle he sees it or he felt it. Some will say the elephant is uh, like a tree because he touched the leg. The elephant is like a balloon or whatever because it touched the, the stomach. This also is what we have in the news and uh, media and reporting. Each reporter is a subjective reporter because he deems, he or she deems the angle from which he will report the event. And also what happens in the newsrooms and the decision of which particular message to be sent out and which particular message to be dropped. So, and these informations are tailored for a, 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 a particular reason, be it political, be it profit, be it personal factors. If I'm a, a, a reporter who, who hates um, certain kinds of people, I might report my news based on my personal experiences or personal factors. And I also have the option of packaging my story in order to elicit reaction that will bring about more profit to the organization. And I might also tell her this message to be able to um, elevate certain political agenda against the other one. So these are what happens in most of the messages that we listen to, most of the contents. And also we individual uh, individuals in our messages, on our posts, on our social medias, we tell her all these messages in order to to confront our personal factors or whatever angle that we are coming from. Of course, you are not going to, hello? We are not going to, to tell all these messages in order to please How other person. That's okay. We are telling based on whatever. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Zenret. <laughs> it was interfering. So these are what happens in the packaging of whatever content that we listen to, be it written works, media content, billboards, and every other aspect of media. The sixth, we should understand the internal language of the media in order to understand its complex effects. Developing this skill makes us become familiar with the intent and motivation behind media messages. Each medium has production preference, which dictates the editorial values and decisions in the placement of headlines and titles. Like I have just explained, this is what happens in the newsrooms. Each medium has their own production preference. Sometimes you have like a, in our country, we have certain news medium that are pro, pro government. So if you want to listen, if you want to balance this thing, you listen to them and listen to the other medium. 
for you to be able to understand what is going on in our government. Because if you listen to that particular medium, all, all you are going to be listening to is pro-government content. You will not hear anything against the government. So each medium has production preference. Now, we are in the age of media saturation. This is an era of media saturation where we are bombarded with so much information to consume and technology to use. We have Snapchat, we have LinkedIn, we have Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, email, everything. There are so many technology. There are so many information that goes across all these mediums that we are bombarded with, that we are exposed to. And these technologies make us to stay long on media, consuming messages that sometimes that are subtle and gradually change our perspective in life, perspectives of life. Sometimes we don't even know that we are even changing our perception of life from this to this. From our cultural values, cultural perspectives, we start adopting other cultural perspectives. These are what media can do. And these are what overconsumption of media contents can also expose us to. And we start normalizing a lot of things that we may not have been able to normalize if we are not exposed to all these bombardment of messages. You might start seeing them as normal because you've been seeing them across the media. So the media's messages sometimes are subtle and gradually change our perspectives of life. So when we use, spend so much time on our media, on our mobile phones, because it's already on our palms. So on a flip of hand, finger, you can just get into any of these apps. Even with our computers that we dwell with so much in a day, doing our works and doing our every other thing. So we are too engrossed with all these um, apps and we are too consumed in media and technology. We tend to now live on the internet and we have been exposed to so much information and adverts so much, but media literacy makes us to learn and to moderate ourselves for our health and our well-being. Sometimes you don't know our mental health will just because of so many things, so much information that we tend to psychologically go off. So, but when we moderate ourselves, how many um, apps that you use, if you cannot keep up with all this, reduce. There are so many apps on there that you, you will not be able to finish. You will not be able to use all of them, but use those that are very much important to you. Remove those that are not important to you so that you have your life. After all, our lives are not on the internet. We still have our normal lives to live. We still have our markets to go, our schools to go, and our children to look after, and our families to attend to, and other chores. But when we consume all these and still spend a lot of time on them, all these apps and technologies, we tend to forget what the real life is about. So when we moderate ourselves, on, from the use of all these technologies and also the bombardment of information from the media, we'll be able to take care of our mental health and our well being and our psychology as well. But we want you to stay. We in the media want you to stay too because your stay also guarantees our profit. But staying for a profit will not guarantee your well being. So moderate yourself. Media is no longer only a medium for communication and information exchanges. It has also transformed into a business that is dominated by media corporations and the owners who would promote their own interests. 
before, media corporations are vast, but today they have compressed to few corporations who want to dominate the global market. And these media corporations and owners are into business. So they would tell us messages that would bring profit, that will make you to click and read. And from there, they bring their, their, their profit is made. So these media corporations or owners have their own interests. They also have a um, hand in what um, 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 messages that are tailored for us to consume. So knowing all these things, we make you to have a healthy interaction with media content and messages that you see every day. Because most corporations also want their profit. They don't care how you react to all these messages. They don't care how you, uh, uh, you are affected with all these messages. All they care is their profit. But it is left on you to be able to make sense of the messages that you receive and critically analyze all these messages. So these media companies and actors have ambition of global market domination and serve as the messengers of a new global era. Like I just said, the profits behind most of the messages that we receive. Now, why is it's very important because it helps us to navigate. <clears throat> why is media literacy important? It's very important because it helps us to navigate the media saturated world. To navigate the media, we should consider these key questions from the Center for Media Literacy. These questions, number one is, who created this message? When you receive a media message or media content, ask yourself, who created this message? Is it me? Or is it another, is it this medium? Is this this corporation? From which angle, who is actually creating this message? When you ask this question, the next question is what techniques I use to attract my attention? The techniques are sometimes words, the choice of words, like I said earlier, the choice of words are skillfully chosen. The words that are placed are skillfully chosen and skillfully placed in a way to get your attention. Is it text messages? Is it video? Is it how? What techniques? Sometimes you see an advert. You see a, a, a beautifully dressed lady standing in front of a car because they want to attract your attention to the car using the beautiful, beautifully dressed lady, sometimes half clad for you to be able to see that car. They use that as uh, uh, to, to lure you. So these are the techniques that I use to attract your attention. And sometimes in packaging a news, I'm using the word packaged. Most news and every message is packaged. In packaging the news, there are some props that are put in place that will attract you to make you attention to be attracted. Sometimes you see a news package, ah, the background, you see the background, you like it. The placement of the, the, the camera and the lightning and all these things, these are skillfully placed for you to be, for your attention to be attracted. Now ask another question, number three question. How might people understand this message differently? You know that one message sent, we understand it differently from each person's perspectives. How are other people understanding this message? You seek out, that's where you look for individual voices to also help you to understand the content that you received or other alternative sources for you to um, understand the message. Then the fourth question is, what lifestyles 
values and points of view are represented in or omitted from this message? What lifestyle is being propagated in that message, in that media content? What values are propagated? What point of view are propagated? What is represented and what is omitted from that particular message? You ask yourself, if the lifestyle conforms to yours, the values conforms to yours, or points of view conform to yours. So you ask yourself these basic questions. And then the fifth question is, why was this message sent? Why was this message sent? Is this message sent to not only attract your attention or to make you to change your perspective in life or to subtly to make you to start seeing life in a different way or to accept a product or to accept an organization or to push you to the streets or to push you to self-hate, whatever. What, why was this message sent? So you ask yourself these basic five questions for you to be able to understand the media content that you consumed. Then, what are the benefits of media literacy? The benefits of media literacy are quite plenty. It helps us to be wise in consuming media messages. It makes us to appreciate the literary work and be more critical of the information we receive and how to treat it. It helps us to understand the world and various perspectives while not being easily influenced beyond what we can take. It builds more critical citizens and foster respectful discourse and informed social political, social cultural choices. Once we understand how the media works, we will also understand ourselves better and to self-express and also be good citizen. If we don't understand media messages, we might not be able to contribute to our national development or human development. We might not be able to make good political choices or social choices or cultural choices, whatever choices. And we might not be able to hold meaningful and respectful discourse because we might start misunderstanding easily misunderstand another person if we do not understand the message or the content we consume. So when we have media, we, when we are media literate, we'll be able to call, um, um, hold respectful discourse and make informed choices. And also I'll have to add, when you read widely, you'll be able to understand widely what so many messages are talking, are saying, or many, many messages that we consume. Media literacy education aims to help young people to see that the media are in the business of selling them products and behaviors that are not always good for them. There are so many products and behaviors that are tailored for profit that are not always good for us, our individual well being. And th these are found in media messages that if we don't know, we fall prey. And our behaviors to life will change. There are certain adverts that are pro uh, propagated that are mostly that we drive young people if, 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 if. Um, a liquor uh, alcohol company. They have to advertise for their product and they'll try to paint it that the alcohol is good. And then our young people will go into drinking and destroy their lives. So some of the messages are not always good for us. And most of these messages are tailored to attract us and to hit our emotional reaction. And then we go out into the world, acting out what we see or what we read. But being literate of 
media and how it works. We'll be able to, to say no to certain messages that we receive. And I'd like to conclude that with this message that some of the skills we have to imbibe involves knowledge about media industries, how these industries are and who owns the industries and the angle that they are coming from. The media messages, media audiences and media effects. These effects are some of these things that I have laid out that affect our health, health and well-being. But our minds are like a garden. By being critical, we'll be able to know which and which content that we plant in our minds, that is our garden. We must be able to block off any, any content that are not useful to our health and well-being and accept those that we have judged, critically analyzed and judged to be okay for us. These are what media literacy are talking about. Being able to critically analyze each and any message you receive, be it adverts, be it message, for you to be able to live your life, live it happily and live it healthily. Thank you so much. For me. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this was really Thank my pause. Thank you so much. Um, now we are uh, we to the part where we ask questions or contribute. And the floor is open. You can ask her uh, questions about what you've had today or what you see in the media. <clears throat> you are welcome. The floor is open now. You can Thank you. Mm -hmm. Rose, do you have a question? Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Uh, uh, that is a pretty loaded topic right now um, with media. Can you hear me okay? Yes, her name is Uzo. Okay. So I'm okay. Um, so I just wanted to say that, yeah, the media, it's really a tricky situation that we're in. I, I hear all your points. It's just, there's still, it feels overwhelming. Um, and I'm wondering, <laughs> as myself experiencing this, I do understand the sentiment that yes, we need to educate ourselves. Yes, we need to be critical thinkers. Um, but in a world where we are always so busy and have all these things to do, the idea for so many to, oh, really do your investigation and to, uh, you know, look here and look there and think critically, it can be you know, a daunting task for a lot of people, especially when we don't know who to trust or what to trust. And okay, this sounds, this sounds like this person is being truthful, but we don't know what their secret agenda is or their bias or who's paying for their, you know, their publishing. Um, so it is a daunting task and I just, I don't know, I, I, I still feel like I, I hear all the points, but it's, I think that like in our day and age, we just, a lot of, a lot of us just feel like, I don't know, I don't even want to participate at all, which is a horrible thing. I mean, I'm not saying that I do that for, you know, elections and whatnot, but for a lot of, you know, I'm not on social media a lot. I'm not, um, trying to do a lot of online shopping because I don't like that, you know, there's, it's not even just that we are being given a bunch of information, we're being manipulated because a lot of these um, people are hiring psychologists who are very well trained, um, who know, know how our brains work better than we do. And so we are being, you know, manipulated without, you know, ever realizing it. So I don't know, I guess I'm not sure what my question is. It's just that I hear you, but I still, I'm still not really finding the solution um, to really find the change. And like, is this, is it, is it going to get worse before it ever gets better? Is there, is there really nothing else to be done, but for us to 
um, continue doing research and finding, and you're saying like, you know, even finding people that you do trust that you can't, you can't trust them either. So it's like, I mean, I had somebody come up to me recently saying, Hey, when you go through your election ballot, please let me know what you got because I trust you and I'm going to vote the way you vote. And it's like, I get that sentiment because people don't want to go through the, the trouble of figuring out, you know, what prop or what person to vote for. Cause it takes a lot of work. And they just want to be like, okay, I know this person. I trust this person. I'm going to go for for them. So I don't know. Do you have, I don't know if you have any feedback for, from, from these feelings that I'm having, but <laughs> that's just, these are the emotions that I have um, dealing with the media and trying to be an informed, um, critical um, c consumer of media. Well, it's really a tricky situation, like you said, because you don't know who to trust. Again, whether to trust yourself or to even trust the media itself. But yet, the media still serves, serves you with information that you might not be able to get, that you cannot walk up to. So the media still brings those information to you. But what you do is to be critical. And that is why to do deals, very little do the uh, research about each information you get. Because if you are able to investigate, there are certain times, because we do not have a much, a, enough time on the, we, we, because of this bombardment of information, you know that we have reduced our attention span. Yes, mm -hmm. we've reduced mm -hmm. our attention span. And sometimes in packaging this news, whatever agenda I want to set as a reporter, I might give you the first three paragraphs of my news reporting might be what I want you to go on with. But the facts might be reduced to the sixth paragraph. So even if I want to tell her it in that way. I will still try to lay the facts, but it's left for an individual to have a critical analytical mind. This information is really the, the end of it. You go further. That is what the media literacy is talking about. Go further and analyze, be able to evaluate, be able to analyze the info, information you get, go further and evaluate whole, whole suddenly so that you are not being manipulated. Even somebody, even your friend can manipulate you. Even if you trust me, my messages on social media can be manipulative because I'm coming from an angle from my own personal perception or from my own personal experiences. So I can still manipulate you. So it is left on you individually to go further, just a little further for that particular information. Yeah. Thank you. Does it answer your? OK, thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Uzo. Um, do you have any other questions or concerns or contributions? Um, Irene? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Um, um, I just want to also just ask a question like uh, what Rose was saying. It's true, like when it comes to media, even social media, we are receiving a lot of information. And, and like I said, to take the time. Um, to analyze it and, and, and know. But sometimes what happens is that we don't even understand what is there already. So how will you be able to just look at it or um, and understand and know, okay, even though this is what is said there, but it's different, what they the underlying answer is not what I am looking at. How will you be able to just look at it for a while and be able to understand that? Because sometimes even advertisement, you look at it you're like, okay, I saw this, but that's not the meaning of it. So how will you be able to be able to make sure that whatever you see out there advertised or said by people, you will be able to um, 
know exactly what it meant. Uh, I would like to contribute. Can I contribute? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Bintu. I'm uh, from the Gambia here in the West Africa. And uh, I'm a communication specialist. So I thank you. I'm, I, th I find your platform very informative and I'm really happy to be uh, taking part. Um, yes, I mean, uh, from the perspective that uh, Umi just uh, mentioned, what I want to say is that uh, when it comes to social media, information on social media, it's true that we are overwhelmed with uh, tones of information. And uh, to make the information more relevant according to uh, areas of interest, what is interesting in social media is that you can, you can join, you can possibly join groups of interest. So social media is uh, framed in such a way that the information per individual is captured, meaning that uh, social media is very intelligent. They will always try to figure out your interest and make suggestions to you based on those interests, okay? Meaning that you will have different options coming up, coming up to you based on the most uh, uh, information that you are clicking on as you go daily or weekly or depending on how much social media you access. So if you do not want to be overwhelmed with tons of information, you have to subscribe to those that are of interest to you and then you will be receiving suggestions that are related to that. And then also add people that you know uh, also, also share similar interests. If it's professional, if it's communication related, or if it's social, or if it's, you name it, health, reg information regarding health or anything, try to always join groups or add people who also share the same type of uh, interest. In that way, social media being so intelligent will always be suggesting uh, those type of information to you. And then as you go on your timeline, if it's for Facebook, for example, you will be um, receiving lots of suggestion of uh, like-minded people or of uh, relevant groups to your, according to your, to your preference. Yeah, that is right too, because sometimes when you click on internet to search for something and then when you come back to Facebook or Twitter or whatever, there is an advert related to whatever information you have searched on Google Chrome presented in your front as an advert. So trying to analyze adverts, it's depending on your choice of what you actually want. You don't just go because I advertise a um, cigar and you don't want cigar. Would you click on cigar to know what I'm exactly. talking about? So yeah, no. advert is related to your choice or the preferences or whatever that you have. And like uh, Binto said, social media is very intelligent. They, they, they know wherever we go. They know wherever we go. And, and if, if you want add, to tell... Yeah, sorry. Sometimes you might even go to all these small, small, let me just say, if you ever go to search porn, then you come back to Facebook, you will see adverts on pawns in front of you, laid out in front exactly. of you. Exactly. So it's about your okay. choice of searches, choice Absolutely. of... Oh, <laughs> whatever <laughs> your, your, your activities is about your activities online exactly. so you get and you know social media tell us adverts based on your own particular preference it's not like our billboard or television adverts that, that just lays out adverts that you make your choice but social media brings it particularly to your choice of in social interaction internet interaction. Yeah. And that's the reason why you sometimes even have the option to, to ban a certain type of advertisement from your page, because they would actually ask you if this uh, advertisement is relevant to you or if it is not. And if you say yes, it will keep on popping up. If you say no, it will block yes. it and it won't reappear again, you know? Mm. Yeah. That's is it. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, uh, Vinta Kamara, uh, for that interesting contribution. Uh, do we have another person again to share ideas, contribute, or ask questions? Okay, um, for me, I have a question, but this one is like maybe as uh, a parent, you are a parent, because sometimes also we, uh, as parents, how will you be able to make sure that you are able to guide your young teenage son or young teenage daughter on what they will go and look for on social media? Because uh, sometimes you want to make sure that uh, they learn, but at least while learning, also you want them to understand that there is a lot out there that is not good for them. How will you be able to find that balance and have that communication with your kids at home so that at least you are able to guide them, but still at the same time, they will be able to learn something? Interesting question. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I, I have younger ones, but how I, how I educate them is and um, laying all these things in front of them so that they don't learn it from outside. If you allow them to learn it from outside, there, there is tendency that they are going to be manipulated in a very negative way. So if there is something, but not pumps, if there is something I see, I might, in my own way, from my own perspective, I tell her that message to them so that in a very bit, um, how they will understand, how they will quickly understand it and in a very positive light so that they, whenever they see it outside, maybe with their friends or whatever, wherever they see it, they, the, the explanation you give them will be ringing in their mind and they will see it from your own perspective, not from the outsider perspective. You know, there are a lot of external forces that always compete with our own minds. So, but as a parent, you have to be the first person to lay that force or lay that um, message, the content that they will consume before they go out and learn it from other sources that might be very, very negative. That's how I, I, I do it. And that's how I will do it. Does it answer your question? Yes, um, thank you for that um, um, answer. Uh, do we have another person to contribute? Any yeah, questions? I would like to contribute. Yes. Okay, uh, I, I really uh, like the, uh, the, the answer that was given because uh, it's very valuable and uh, it's actually uh, how, it should be do how it should be done. The fact that uh, parents, uh, are the primary point of contact to their kids when it comes to explaining a certain type of information that is on social media is very, very important because from then on, the child would already know, would already have a clear opinion, I want to say, as to what a certain content means and uh, how to um, look into it without uh, really taking uh, the opinion of peers in consideration when uh, absorbing that information. So yes, I'm entirely for that being a mother myself. I think that this is how I also do it. And so far it works, but it should not be left at that. I believe that uh, kids are very inquisitive. And even if we give them uh, uh, an explanation as uh, uh, regarding a certain type of content, I think that being in the inquisitive self that they are, they will always try to dig deeper. And whilst digging deeper, they might encounter other type of information given their age. If they are young, it might be prohibited content for their age. So in that case, what I would do or what I actually do is to activate the parental control. I'm not saying that the parental control works 100% because uh, you can still see that some uh, undesirable content sometimes uh, pops up even with the parental control. So I believe that we should also, uh, after engaging with our children regarding a certain type of vulnerable content, we should also activate the parental control on social media. And we should also be very close to seeing what 
type of content they actually access. It's not really easy, I know, definitely not. As parents, we might be busy working, so we can't always be behind their back controlling what they're doing. But I believe in, I, I don't believe in giving free access to internet to kids uh, of a certain age. So it's, uh, it's all due to parental responsibility up to a certain age. Thank you, Bintu, for that further explanation. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kamara. Um, as I look at the time now, it's 10.59 a.m. and we have just a minute. Uh, Zamaka, what are your closing awards for all of us? Thank you. My closing remarks is for us to critically analyze every message, analyze critically every message that we come across. And now to also, when we consume these messages, that will be, we will be able to cut into all these bombardments by being too critical. The word there is being critical, analyzing and evaluating of every message you come across. And also, like I used again before, your mind is like a garden. Be in a, a be in, a, be the person that will bring, that will plant all these things into that garden. Be the watchword, be the, the controller. So control whatever that you have getting into your mind so that you're not being manipulated from any source. Be you powerfully and always be you powerfully. Thank you. Thank you very much, our sisters, people, Uzo Amaka. Yes, be you powerfully and always be you powerfully. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. You can introduce yourselves. Thank you, thank you. Uh, until next time, thank you, and God bless thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.